Overhauling Bosnia-Herzegovina's separate police forces was always going to be a tricky task. There were different police forces in the country's different entities, with different religions and different pasts. Most importantly, the police had played an integral role in the country's civil war. At the end of the war, we had um, uh, almost the entire male population uh, under arms in this country, a lot of them within the police structures, and the police was, in essence, uh, uh, part of the armed forces. Police forces in Bosnia-Herzegovina represent much more than in other Western countries. They represent statehood. They represent an armed force. And they represent one of the country's most intractable problems. Reforming Bosnia-Herzegovina's police forces was vital to secure a multi-million euro agreement, bringing the country closer to the EU, the so-called EU Stabilisation and Association Agreement. That has now been signed. Uh, we have been working with the Bosnian leaders for, for some time. It has been moments of difficulty, but uh, fortunately it has been overcome, and today we have that law passed and approved by the Parliament. I think that opens the way to keep on deepening the relationship between Bosnia-Herzegovina and the European Union. At first glance, the police seem to be doing a good job in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Uh, Honestly, I feel much safer in Bosnia any day than in many other more developed countries in the West. Strechko Letal is a Bosnian journalist who covered the war in his own country and in others. He's also worked as a communication expert for the World Bank and international think tanks. For six years I was, I was going to Washington and, you know, people there know. If you cross a certain invisible line wearing, you know, posh Nike shoes, you know, there is a very high probability that something bad will happen to you. You can walk freely in the morning, in the evening, in Sarajevo, in Banja Luka, you know, in Foča, in Mostar, wherever. Brigadier General Vicenzo Coppola is the head of the European Union's police mission in Bosnia-Herzegovina. In Europe proper, in the European Union proper, I know hundreds of places which are far more uh, dangerous than Sarajevo math by far. And the progress they have made in reforms is not just limited to people's safety. We, we had a secret services that were divided between Serbs, Croats, Muslims uh, here, each obviously spying on each other. And we've now got um, uh, uh, secret services which um, actually uh, work together. But despite this progress, most observers do not see the police reform as a success. Uh, what has happened in Bosnia and Herzegovina is, in essence, this question has been put off. And it's been put off uh, uh, until we have uh, some sort of broader, perhaps, constitutional uh, settlement, because so many of the issues relating to police reform were also issues which, in essence, uh, related to uh, constitutional uh, matters. So I think here um, th these are long-term issues, again, related to the uh, structure um, of this particular country. Uh, police reform was seriously mishandled by the international community and it was one of the key elements that uh, enabled signing of the stabilization and association agreement with the EU. However, uh, police reform basically stagnated ever since 2003-2004. And there was, I mean, the, 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 the few laws that passed, that were passed by local parliaments, uh, which was condition for SAA to be signed, more or less mean really nothing. Sead Numanovic is the deputy editor of the Nevini Avaz, a major Bosnian newspaper. What we have now are the ruins of the ruins of the ruins of the, additional, of the original reform. The reforms seem to fall down more due to what they symbolized than what they involved. Pedi Erstaun, when he started this reform, explained the essence of importance of it. It is not about the police, it is about the statehood. Uh, who has a police? It has a state. I think uh, police reform uh, was uh, conceptually flawed. I think a number of people felt the police was a proxy for constitutional change. That if they, for example, Republic of Srpska agreed to transfer competencies for police from the entity to the state, that that somehow would undermine the existence of the entity itself. And so you got a lot of resistance on that issue, not on the technical merits. And so uh, we saw on police reform, I think what we had experienced earlier in defense reform, it's really a political issue, it's not a technical issue. Even the most radical uh, 
um, politicians in this country could not defend the fact to have uh, three armies, ethnically based armies. This was undefendable. But they have the very good reasons, at least on paper, to defend the fact that every institution, entities, cantons, birch, or state, could have had its own police, because this is an example in many other countries. There has also been some questioning of both the choices made during the reform and its timing. The reasons for the failure of this reform go back to 2002, 2003, and 2004, Paddy Ejdown picked one of the three uh, possibilities for police reform as proposed by you itself. And, I mean, picked the, the most difficult one and said, well, this will be the condition for the EU. And ever since then, you know, I mean, that option was, even back then, rejected by Bosnian Serbs. Police reform uh, took very long because uh, uh, we chose the, the wrong moment to propose the police reform. Police reform was extremely ambitious as a project. I don't say that it was not needed, but was extremely ambitious. Uh, it was proposed at the time uh, uh, when there was not enough uh, political agreement among the political leaders, a real, strong, serious, solid political agreement. Uh, so we have lost uh, three years, actually. According to Sayed Numanovic, uh, a full police reform was within touching distance, but slipped away on at least a couple of occasions. Um, there are two biggest mistakes made during that process. One is made by Petty Ejdown in Lashic in June of 2005, when he was at the brick of the deal and he let the Serbs go for some holiday. And when they came back, they said, no, we are not going to sign it. And he admitted. He, when, he, when we met recently, he said the biggest mistake of his, person, of his career in Bosnia was letting Serbs go on that day because they were ready to sign the paper. The next biggest mistake was the, the, the one that made by the Bosnian politicians on the March, of, March 13, 2006. And the Bosnian uh, politicians were opposing to that for one very stupid thing, that is, they said, we cannot accept anything that, 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 is, that consists with the uh, Republika Srpska names in, on it. Looking back, what could have been done differently? I would have seen uh, in, uh, a higher involvement of the, of the state, state-level agencies, Ministry of Security, SIPA, Border Police, into um, security operations. I would have seen... Uh,